This is Richard Wolf for Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. And this one comes from David Wilkins, and it refers to Kevin Krause's famous book on how corporate America invented Christianity, or at least the, the Christian America. This is a very important book, and I commend it to anyone interested in the relationship between capitalism and religion. It's a field uh, that was pioneered by a group of British historians years ago who asked the question, what is the relationship between Catholicism and Protestantism in the Christian world and the arrival of capitalism? And I'm going to be relying on that older literature when I talk about uh, David Wilkins' question. He wants to know whether the United States is unique in having a religious endorsement of capitalism, of its economic system, having gone through an experience in which the corporate leaders of the country work hard with energy, with pressure, with money to shape the religion of the community to endorse the capitalist system and the capitalists who sit on top of it. And because these questions are old and important, I want to answer them as thoroughly as I can. Every economic system has required, if it survives, that the people who are living in and through that system have training, let's call it, indoctrination, if you like, education, if you like, teaching, whatever word you like, that gives them the understanding that the economic system is good, is the best human beings can hope for, is fair, is beloved of whatever gods there are in whatever religion the economic system appeals to. And so, for example, let's take Christianity, which is the best known uh, to my audience in all likelihood. It begins as a religion, really, of the slaves, a religion of the poor. Many of the statements in the New Testament, for sure, are about that, and very clearly so. It's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. That's from the Bible. The money changers were thrown out of the temple because they didn't belong there. That's not an endorsement. That's the opposite. And yet, within a few centuries of its beginning, Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. And in that capacity, taught people to revere the emperor, to think of the emperor as just below God himself and to be loyal, and to believe in slavery. Christianity has been very flexible. When the Christian, well, excuse me, when the Roman Empire fell in the fifth century, and Europe entered what came to be known either as the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages, the Christian church shifted and became supportive, not of the slave system, which was gone, but of the feudal system, which replaced it. The church its, itself endorsed the Lord over the serf. The church itself became a Lord with its own serfs, literally endorsing the system because it adopted it itself. And then we know that under Fidel Castro or the leadership in many Catholic countries, the Catholic Church and the socialists who became powerful worked out an arrangement to live together for decades. Sometimes, of course, the religions don't endorse. And not only Christians am I talking about here, but the Jews, the Jewish religion in Israel is supportive of Israeli capitalism. And the Islamic religions are often supportive of capitalisms in the countries where Islam is the powerful and dominant religion. But of course, sometimes it doesn't work out. 
sometimes either the religion becomes oppositional, takes a position against the government, or sometimes religion itself becomes too weak to be the endorser, to keep the system going. In the latter case, there's a supplement. The system teaches people, not just in churches and in religious ways, to endorse it. So for the United States, for example, which is quite well along in secularism, we don't just rely on the church to teach people ways of thinking that endorse capitalism. We have schools that do that. We have mass media that do that. We have an enormous apparatus of intellectual indoctrination that celebrates capitalism as the Christian churches and in this country, the Jewish synagogues and the, the Islamic temples as well. But yes, it's also possible for them to split. Some years ago, there was a very strong tradition within the Roman Catholic Church called liberation theology, which was critical of capitalism. And the Vatican, at a certain point, the leadership of the Roman Catholic Church, forced the end of that movement, gave an ultimatum to the priests who led it that they would be excommunicated if they persisted and they didn't. They stepped down, by and large, not all of them, but most of them. And so there was a confrontation. When Poland was still a, a, in the communist world, the Roman Catholic Church in that country became quite critical as part of the breakaway Eastern Europe as it broke away from the Soviet orbit. So in general, religion adapts and supports the dominant economic system. But it can be persuaded under really difficult conditions to become critical. And then a clash occurs. And out of that, maybe they'll step down these critical religious leaders. But sometimes they can become the spearhead. They can become an important part of a revolutionary movement. We see that often in history. If these kinds of interventions strike you as useful, in terms of the books they highlight, the arguments they make, the difficult positions they try to elucidate, then partner with us, share them with others. That's why we make them. And if, of course, you can help with the costs we incur to do this, that would be appreciated as well. Thank you.